Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Welcome to 86th lecture. Uh, we have been discussing about the Hohmann transfer, bioelectric transfer, and we looked into different aspects. Which one is better? Okay. Now, today, uh, here in this lecture, we'll do uh, this one tangent and one ton non-tangent one. Why? Because the Hohmann transfer it takes a longer time for transferring from one orbit to another orbit. Let us say I have this inner orbit, and there is another outer orbit and I have to go from inner to outer or outer to inner orbit. So, in the human transfer we will follow the trajectory like this. So, going from point A to point B. So, total flight time then is increased. Instead of doing this if I suppose if I carry this maneuver instead of going like this, if it is done like from here it starts the same point you are starting, but and one tangent burn you are giving and thereafter the orbit goes like this. And then the velocity here will be in this direction and the circular velocity will be in the final orbit this is the V f c and this is V f in the elliptic orbit. So, you require this much of impulse to change from this elliptic orbit to this one. So, thereby we reduce the travel time. So, time to travel from this point to this point it gets shortened. Can we go from this point to this point directly? So, you can see that the velocity is here in this direction at V a, this is the velocity or let us write this as the V i and we have to go here in this direction. So, how much impulse will be required? So, one V i is here in this direction okay. and this is your V here in this direction, velocity you have to change. So, going with certain velocity here in this direction, <coughs> to change the velocity from this direction to this direction you require impulse like this, but is it feasible? So, let us look through the equation, what we have written. as this is v i and this is say v prime. So, or I just simply we write as v and this is delta v. So, v prime will be v a square plus delta v a square minus 2 v delta v and this angle is alpha then cos alpha. on the root plus 2 v times delta v cos alpha. So, if v is like this and you want to change it in the perpendicular direction. So, with v it is a making here 270 degree. So, if we put here cos alpha equal to 270 degree, so that means it is a 0 cos 180 plus 90 equal to minus cos minus cos 90 and this will be equal to 0. So, this term drops out and we are left with this. Okay. 
So, this way if we are trying to go from this place to this place okay, so one mistake is there uh, that we should correct what we have shown here uh, this, this is the angle cos alpha is between okay, no so we have done it correctly and this is okay this is v prime and this is v i we have written this is delta v okay. delta v so that uh, this is the resultant v prime okay this is fine so this is the resultant velocity and this is the initial velocity and this is the impulse so if we add these two vectors this is v i and if we add the impulse here delta v so we are getting this as v prime so the angle from here to here this is 270 this is fine so the shortest possible time is that i give a large impulse at here in this point very large impulse so that it directly moves from this point to this point but giving a large impulse is not possible very large impulse it's not possible so it's a not a practical thing Okay, you cannot design rocket like that it gives you infinite impulse and then directly you move from one place here to here. So, therefore, to reduce the sometimes it may be required that instead of going in a Hohmann transfer you give one tangent bond here and give one non tangent bond here. Now, this is why non tangent because this delta v here delta v f required here this is not along v f c it is not along this direction and therefore, this is called non tangent bond non tangent So, this is what we are going to do in this again the written material I will provide you for this particular part and uh, we quickly do this part here. So, initially this is the initial one let us write this as the v i in the circular orbit and we are trying to go in this. So, we are following a first a tangent bond here we are following a tangent bond and it goes like this is after coasting it is uh, going like this and then so if you start from this place we can look that the true anomaly of the transfer orbit is this is theta. And initial point this happens to be the, these two are the circular orbit the same way you, are, you can also do for the elliptical orbit. So, we start from this point given tangent bond here and then the velocity vector is directed along this direction this is in the v f e while in the circular orbit the velocity vector is directed L tangent to the orbit which is v f c. So, we need impulse here in this direction this is delta in the opposite direction rather. in this direction we require impulse delta v f to put here in the inner orbit. Okay. So, what are the steps involved that we are going to write. So, here in this particular case we can state the problem like this r initial is given r final is given and theta let us say this point is b and theta b is given 
that we have to go and get into the inner orbit at the point B and from there then need to work out how much impulse total impulse is required. So, in that context we need the eccentricity of the transfer orbit this E t is required and then we also required the semi major axis of the transfer orbit and also we required the T tau or T whatever you say this is the coasting time going from this place to this place A to B this is point A okay. and then we also need delta V A and delta V V we need to work out all these things. Here in this case, case A is directly not available we cannot write R i plus R f divided by 2 equal to A transfer because this is only one the orbit is touching each other ok. Both the this transfer orbit is touching both the inner and the outer orbit at that time only we can do this. So, here in this case we have to go through some other route ok. Now, we start with this. R initial at this point equal to R A transfer orbit times 1 plus minus E transfer orbit plus is for if we start the maneuver here in here in this case this happens to be apogee. So, for this is for apogee if the maneuver is a starting at and minus is for perigee. So, that your R i R initial the uh, r initial is here this point this radius is r i. So, your distance to this point is r i r initial equal to a transfer times 1 plus e t where e is the eccentricity of the transfer orbit which is shown in green. Similarly, r final this will be r final is here in this point ok and that we can write in terms of transfer orbit. So, 1 plus e cos theta here b we have written. So, we will use this notation theta b and this quantity is a times 1 minus e transfer a square 1 plus this is also e transfer because both are cutting here the circular orbit and the elliptic orbit which is the transfer orbit they are crossing each other. So, this quantity must be the same. So, we have got R f and uh, R i equation also we have written like this where A is unknown and E t is also unknown here both these quantities are unknown, but R i this quantity is known here R f is known. In this equation E t and A t both are unknown ok. So, the same thing it applies here L t of the transfer orbit. So, therefore, R f it becomes we can replace this uh, A t from this place. So, this we can write as R i divided by 1 plus minus E t times one minus E t square divided by one plus cos theta b. which can be written as 1 minus plus E t minus for opposite and plus for perigee. This is because of the division ok. Here the upper one was opposite and lower one was perigee. So, once we divide with plus sign, so we get a minus sign here which corresponds to opposite. Okay, so, this is your the final 
radius 1 plus e t cos theta b r f is known r i is known theta b is known only thing e t is not known. So, e t we can calculate from this place. So, this gives you e t equal to if we solve it. Uh, so, what I will do that uh, to simplify I will write here r i by r f equal to n inverse always we are using the symbol r f by r i equal to n. So, r i by r f will be n inverse. So, this gets simplified 1 plus e t cos theta b this equal to n inverse 1 minus plus e t and then combine the terms uh, which is uh, in terms of e t. Okay. So, e t we will take it outside. So, e t cos theta b and from this place then get v as plus minus here this is minus for opposite and plus for perigee e t cos theta b and minus sign on this side gets plus plus sign gets minus. So, this is e t times n inverse. So, e t we are taking outside. So, n inverse we put it like this and this is n inverse minus 1. And therefore, e t equal to n inverse minus 1 divided by cos theta b plus minus n inverse where plus is sign is for apogee again the sign reversal takes place and this is for perigee. So, this way e t is known once e t is known therefore, e t can be calculated e t equal to r i divided by 1 plus minus e t where plus is for apogee and minus is for perigee. So, this way e t is known e t is known for the transfer orbit. So, this exercise we need to do and we have to take care that here uh, in the denominator the quantity does not become 0. If that happens then uh, you can immediately see that your uh, e t becomes infinite. Okay. So, uh, this is not a defined case. So, we have to take care of that particular thing. Okay. Once this is done then we write the algorithm here. So, given r initial r final and theta b for the where you have to capture in the second orbit find e t a t tau transfer or simply tau t and then uh, delta v a and delta v b. So, e transfer we already we have written this is n inverse minus 1 as we have written here n inverse minus 1 cos theta b minus plus n inverse minus for perigee uh, e transfer minus for perigee and plus for opposite minus for perigee and plus for opposite. We have this minus sign is for perigee and plus for opposite. Okay. So, this is the first step. The second one the a t we have to get. So, this we have written as r initial divided by 1 plus e t 
divided by 1 plus minus c t and plus sign is for apogee and minus for perigee. Then the third step calculate v final which will be equal to mu by r final under root v initial is mu by r initial under root and in the transfer orbit v t at this point where you are starting at a here. So, v transfer orbit at a this will be mu times 2 by r initial minus 1 by a transfer under root okay. and v t b as per it appears here v t b this is mu times 2 by r f minus 1 by a t under root. So, from here here are the two impulses required it is known to us So, delta v a we can write as v t a minus v i and delta v b it is v t b minus v f. So, what we need to do that uh, okay, we have to take care of the sign also. So, for now look into this in the initial orbit what is the velocity and the transfer orbit what is the velocity here uh, this particular part this is corresponding to a here this is corresponding to b this is corresponding to b okay so once you write it like this thereafter you need not worry about which one is positive negative just take the magnitude of this okay. after calculating the quantity and the sign of this will tell you whether you have to uh, give a impulse to reduce the velocity or to increase the velocity that will be visible from this point. Okay. So, I, I am not going into all those details you can check it similarly at the final point once we are going here in this point. So, whether the velocity required is here in this direction the change in velocity or here in this direction that can be calculated depending on the sign. This is I am leaving up to you to work it out. Thereafter what remains is uh, delta V a delta V v this is time to coast from this place to this place. For this you need in the transfer orbit first we need to calculate what is the time taken to come from this point to this point. Okay. So, taking this is the orbit and this is the perigee position here perigee at lying here in this point okay. and from here then the it starts what is the time taken to come to this point and then calculate the time to come to from this point again from starting this point to point B and then subtract it. So, you will get the time okay. otherwise various other ways are there. Uh, so, already we have discussed this in the uh, and you might have done the problem using the Kepler's equation. So, I am not going into those details. So, this way this problem is completed. Okay, I have taken little shortcut on this aspect. Uh, okay one more point that we need to discuss uh, the left left out one is the ang this angle. 
So, this angle already if, if you remember I have discussed this point a lot because um, once we did the generalized trajectory transfer. So, at that time we have discussed this part. So, this is your V f c and in this direction this is your V f e V f e which is has got covered here this is V f e and this is V f c. So, V f c is tangent to the inner circle as shown here in this point and V f e is going inside ok it is a penetrating inside. So, how much this angle will be this can be calculated ok as we have done earlier now, this happens to be the flight path angle. Okay. So, flight path angle as you can see from this point this in this case this turns out to be negative. Here once we come say if uh, this is the ellipse and this is its uh, focus center is here okay. and then you are entering here in this point. So, at this point this is the radius vector perpendicular direction is here and v vector is lying like this. So, this flight path angle this gets negative value this is the r direction ok. Here if we are going here in this direction. So, from here to here this is the theta direction theta cap direction this is your theta cap direction and v direction is like this. So, here this is phi. So, this phi turns out to be positive. Okay, for this issue was raised in one of the question by some student uh, related to uh, some of the tutorial sheet. So, there I have replied to that. So, here quickly we will look into this point and this is nothing but our uh, recall from the previous session this is r theta direction. So, r theta dot is here in this direction this is v and somewhere this is theta. So, uh, phi we have written here. So, this is your flight path angle and this angle we have indicated as alpha and this angle is your theta angle. So, tan phi this is written as r dot divided by r dot theta dot and this we have derived it also. Okay. So, tan phi divided r dot and from where we have got r equal to l by 1 plus e cos theta. So, directly from there we are getting r and uh, theta dot is coming from h by r square. So, using this we have written the result and this can be written as e sin theta divided by 1 plus e cos theta. So, if you know the theta the true anomaly where in the pre, in this case it is theta b this is theta b ok. This is then 4. So, here just you need to insert this theta b. So, that gives you the phi value. So, you know the angle between these two vectors one vector is going like this from the focus one vector is along this direction or let us go into the previous figure this is your v f c here in this direction and then this is your v here in this direction v f e ok. So, delta f required here in this place delta v f that we can compute. So, this is the quantity here and from this place your phi angle is known whether positive or negative that you have to consider. And uh, all other values uh, we have already done. Uh, so, just look back into that lecture and from there you will get to know that uh, how then we to proceed because there we have done for a very generalized case uh, we are going from this orbit to this orbit. So, there also we are doing the non tangent bond 
and here also we are doing non tangent bond in both the places and based on that the all the calculations are done. Okay, so, we stop here.